I'm Dr. Michael DeTola. And I'm Megan Strong. Put down the handpiece, step off the rheostat. You're watching Chairside Live. Welcome to this edition of Chairside Live. Megan, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Today's case of the week, we're gonna, I wanna share with you something a little more general than a specific case of the week, and I wanna share with you what we've learned over the last three years in terms of the best ways to cement and or bond Bruxer restorations into place. But before we get to that, let's go to Megan with our new stories of the day. Two new studies have revealed a link between sleep apnea and cancer. One study from the University of Wisconsin found that cancer patients with severe sleep apnea are nearly five times more likely to die from cancer than cancer patients without the sleep disorder. People with moderate sleep apnea were found to have double the risk of dying. Another study from the Spanish Sleep Network followed more than 5,000 people over seven years and found that people with the most severe forms of sleep apnea had a 65% greater risk of developing cancer of any kind. Essentially, the greater the oxygen depletion during sleep, the more likely a person would be diagnosed with cancer during the study. Both studies were adjusted to rule out the usual risk factors for cancer. Doctors urge individuals to get screened for sleep apnea if they show any of the telltale signs, such as snoring or extreme fatigue. So you know, Dr. D, with over 28 million Americans suffering from this disorder, I, I would assume that it could be some alarming news to hear. Definitely, and it's just one more reason for dentists to look into treating patients with sleep apnea. In fact, a good friend of mine who we've interviewed before here at the laboratory who treats a lot of sleep apnea patients, I've spent some time in his practice, and it's really rewarding. I mean, the people who you take who have sleep apnea and they wear an appliance, all of a sudden they start to sleep through the night and they'll come in literally in tears saying, I forgot what it felt like to feel good. So in addition to this kind of improvement in their quality of living, the ability to know that you're helping somebody prevent maybe getting a type of cancer like this has got to be really rewarding for the doctor as well. Sure. Anything else? Yes. The mother of a 10-year-old autistic boy in Massachusetts is filing assault and child abuse charges against her son's teacher after she pulled one of his teeth out. Apparently, the child was distracted by the loose tooth and was playing with it, so the teacher pulled the tooth. She sent an email to the mother explaining what had happened and apologized. The mom was upset that someone who was not medically trained pulled the tooth, and she claims it was the wrong tooth she pulled. Wow, that's, um, I'm a little split on this one. On one hand, I like the fact that we have a teacher who's taking out baby teeth. I had to take out many of my own children's baby teeth, and frankly, I wish one of the teachers at school would have done it. But I realize that's probably practicing dentistry without uh, a license, but you really don't need that much experience to take out a baby teeth. There's parents all over the country doing it who haven't been to dental school, so it's not something where I feel like you really need to be trained. And uh, I'm gonna go with the teacher on this one. Of course, if she did take out the wrong tooth, she's just doing her a favor. That one was gonna come out anyway. I say have the teacher take all of them out while she's at it and, uh, Why not? and let the kid get on with their studies. All right, let's go ahead and take a closer look at our case of the week. For this week's installment of Case of the Week, rather than just show you a specific case, I wanted to talk about a broad class of cases, and I wanted to talk to you about cementing and bonding Bruxer crowns and bridges into place. We're doing lots of these restorations now, and this is one of the biggest area of questions that I get via email and at my lecture. So let's talk a little bit about zirconia first. Zirconia is a metal Bruxer crowns are made of zirconia oxide, and so it's a structural ceramic, but zirconia oxide acts a lot like zirconia does. And zirconia is a metal, and like most metals, it shows a real affinity for phosphate groups. So zirconia oxide loves to bond with and is highly attracted to phosphate groups. Now, sometimes phosphate groups come in good places. Uh, certain primers that we use for zirconia, such as Z-Prime Plus from Bisco, or Monobond Plus from Ivaclar, or we'll find a phosphate containing cement like Ceramer from Doxa, where the cement itself will actually bond to a Bruxer crown. All these products have phosphate groups in them that interact very well with the zirconium oxide. Now there's something else that also has phosphates in it, and it's saliva. So saliva contains phosphates in the form of phospholipids. So what this means is anytime we try a Bruxer crown or bridge in the mouth, and we get saliva on the inside of it, now all of a sudden the phosphate groups in the patient's saliva are bonding to the zirconium oxide particles on the inside of the Bruxer crown or bridge. So your first thought may be, well, I need to rinse this out and clean the saliva out of there. And you can rinse the saliva out 
but the phosphate groups are left behind and they're still bound to the zirconium oxide in the inside of the crown. Your second thought may be, mine was, this is an all ceramic crown. I'm going to do what I always did with all ceramic crowns and I'm going to take some phosphoric acid, some etch that we would use in the mouth, and I'm going to put this on the inside of this all ceramic restoration and then rinse it out and that will clean out this restoration. Well, that works great for regular porcelain like Empress that we used to do for veneers. But think about it for a minute. Phosphoric acid is full of, yes, phosphates. And so when you put phosphoric acid inside a Bruxer Crown of Ridge and rinse it out, now you have really messed things up unknowingly because I did this a lot in the beginning. And now all of a sudden you've got phosphate groups bonded everywhere to the inside of the Bruxer Crown of Ridge and nothing's going to stick to it. In fact, you're better off just leaving the, rinsing out the saliva and not using the phosphoric acid. You never want to use that inside a Bruxer crown or bridge. But either way, we've still got some phosphate groups bonded to the inside of the crown. And that's what I wanted to talk about today is a new product from Ivoclar, something called IvoClean. And the IvoClean is an interesting little product uh, because it's an aqueous solution, a little purple solution, and it's got suspended in it about 15% zirconium oxide. So we have zirconia oxide inside this bottle, the same type of zirconia oxide that's in the Bruxer crown. So what happens is we place the IvoClean inside a Bruxer crown that's been placed in the mouth. So it had saliva in it, we rinsed out the saliva, but there's still phosphate groups left behind on the inside of the crown. Now we place the IvoClean inside the Bruxer crown for 20 seconds, and because we have such a high gradient, a high concentration of zirconia oxide particles in the IvoClean, it acts like a sponge and it actually sucks up the phosphate groups from the inside of the Bruxer crown into the IvoClean itself because of that gradient. And then we rinse the IvoClean out of the crown after 20 seconds and now we have a fresh bonding surface on the inside of the Bruxer crown for a phosphate group of our choice, Z prime plus, monobond plus, or the Ceramer cement. Now we get to choose which of the phosphate groups that we want bonding with the inside of our Bruxer crown. I don't think it's possible to even try Bruxner crowns and bridges in the mouth without getting some saliva on the inside of it and have some of these phosphate groups inadvertently bond to the inside of the crown. Now you might ask yourself, do I need to use the IvoClean on every Bruxner crown that I do? I'm using it now on every Bruxner crown that I do just to get a strong enough bond. But I'll tell you this, I cemented two years worth of Bruxner crowns. Uh, without using IvoClean and only two of them have fallen off but most of my preparations were uh, nice and long and uh, the two that did fall off were some shorter preps in the posterior regions of the mouth. Now we know a lot of doctors are just using Bruxer for lower second molars and maybe lower first molars and by definition those are going to be shorter preps and so retention of the Bruxer crown onto the prep is going to be more of a challenge. So I think it's an easy enough procedure to do to use the IvoClean on all your Bruxer crowns if you want to ensure you're getting the maximum bond strength of your cement to your Bruxer restoration. That about wraps it up for this week's edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan Strong, and everybody here at the laboratory, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time.